Good evening, and welcome to On the Campaign Trail. Every week, we try to make sense of the 2022 elections. But we know that the democratic project is in great danger, and that shapes how we think of the May 9 elections. It isn't just elections as usual. In 2022, hashtag we decide. Without neglecting the other basic questions, on the campaign trail, we'll ask how we decide and why we decide. I'm John Neri, and you are on the campaign trail. It's exactly 40 days until election day. And if you're following the campaigns closely, you might also, like me, sense a greater tension, a higher intensity of excitement, perhaps even a taste of desperation in the air. In fact, the calendar is even tighter than we might think. Campaigning is not allowed on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, April 14 and 15, and also on May 8, the Sunday before the elections. That means that candidates from tomorrow have actually only 36 days of campaigning left. Depending on who you ask, the presidential race is either still very much in flux with no certainty as to results or very much in the bag. The unprecedented majority ratings in the pre-election surveys, a sure sign of victory. But the election cycle is full of developments. New tandems are being pushed. Political alignments are being remade. This week, four presidential candidates converged on Mindanao, and it looks like tomorrow, March 31st, President Duterte will make his first campaign sortie. It is possible that in that Cebu rally, he may just endorse his presidential candidate. How do we make sense of all this? We have talked to the pollsters, to the scholars, to the volunteers and campaign staff, to the third-party institutions helping monitor the elections. Tonight, we will talk to two seasoned politicians who are influential among other politicians, who are natural coalition builders and spokespersons to discuss their perspective on the presidential race. Deputy Speaker Rufus Rodriguez started his political career in 1980 while he was still a law student. Today, he is a former law dean who is on his fourth term as congressman. He's running for a fifth term as representative of the second district of Cagayan de Oro City. My Congressman Rodriguez, Governor John Vic Renulia, started his political career as a provincial board member in 1995. He has since served three full terms as vice governor and is completing his third non-consecutive term as governor of Cavite. He is running for re-election as governor. Gentlemen, thank you for making time for the program. Welcome. Thank you, John. Thank you. Nice being here. I'd like to start by asking both of you, Kong Rufus first and then go yeah. uh, John Vick, whether you see the presidential race as still in flux or already very much settled. Uh, asking my good friend, Governor. Yeah. Uh, nothing is settled. Everything is on for will be able to convince the voters to vote for them on May 9. We still have 40 days to go. That happened in 40 days period. So now not certain, so we will just await the campaigns of each candidate and polls, also the, uh, their uh, platform that they done. Thank you, Kong Rufus. Uh, you're, uh, I, we might have a little problem with your connection, but I think we, we got uh, your point. But nothing is settled. Uh, we still have uh, 40 days uh, to go. Um, Bob John, what do you think? Yeah. Election? Well, I, I don't think I'm the best person to ask because there's an obvious bias on my part. Um, but I've seen the numbers and uh, I participated in a, in a number of presidential elections. At this point of the campaign, what you're looking for is momentum. Who has momentum going up? 
who has trajectory going up, who is, is remaining the same, who is maintaining the lead. And that's what you look for. You look for movement. And in the last three uh, survey cycles, we've not seen great movement on uh, BBM's part. He has maintained the 61 to 64 rating. Uh, mm -hmm. It is uh, heartening to see that the Vice President Lenny has gained momentum. She has gone from 8 to 19. But I think a 42-point lead is very difficult to overcome. But again, uh, surveys are snapshots in time, so uh, a lot can still happen. Thank you, Gov. Uh, Cavite, it's the second most vote-rich province in the country with 2.3 No, it's number one. There's always a misnomer that it's number two. But I'm sorry. Cebu, Cebu uh, City and Madawi doesn't vote for the governor. So as an LG, we're the largest in the country. I stand corrected. Thank you. You have 2.3 million registered voters. You and yes. your brother are support Bongbong Marcos. Yes. The Barzaga couple and Congressman Alex Advincol have come out in support of VP Lenny. Presidential candidate Ping Lakson is a favorite son of Cavite. Assuming yes. the same voter turnout as in 2016, some 1.7 uh, million voters from Cavite will vote on May 9. How do you think those votes will break down? Well, uh, I have our internal numbers, and we are very much reflective of what happens to the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. um, BBM is polling here at 63, 64. Um, and uh, I have difficulty hearing. I'm sorry, um, uh, can, I, can I kindly ask you to reconnect uh, so we can uh, reestablish the connection? Paul Rufus, uh, can I ask you to reconnect? Uh, disengage first and then reconnect. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Rob, you were saying, so you were looking yeah. at the yeah, our internal numbers show uh, very much similar to what the national numbers show. Uh, BBM is still steady at 63, 64 here in here in the province. I, I, I cannot hear a the sound. Uh, I don't know why. Apologies. Uh, Oh, um, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Maybe the the producer can uh, adjust something with him. Maybe he's going to mute. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, to put the volume here on. Okay. Um, let me send him a message first. Maybe a cell phone call would be easier. Okay, sorry about that. So, go, yeah. So, okay, yeah. Uh, the same, uh, the internal numbers are the same as uh, for national. Yes, and it's, that's usually where Cavite is, uh, where the national, where Cavite goes, the national is always reflective of where the, the national polls are. So, BBM is holding steady at 63 here in the province. Uh, and that's uh, across all eight districts that we have surveyed. Um, uh, it's tighter in the vice presidential race, but um, uh, Mayor Sara is ahead by, the, I think, 12, 13 points here in the province. But it's tighter in the vice presidential race than on the presidential. Um, Senator Lockson, unfortunately, um, is at uh, 3 or 4%. He started at 18 and the start of the campaign, but his... Uh, his the base of his followers have shifted towards Lenny in the last BB Lenny in the last uh, four weeks, 
So, um, I think in the final analysis, the the, the growth spurt of Lenny's vote, uh, VP Lenny's voters have come from the anti BBMs and not the pro BBM. So you're always looking forward towards um, erosion of the leading candidate towards the other candidate, but it seems Please. that she is picking from the lower ranks of the numbers. So you don't see any movement on BBM's part and a lot more movement on BP Lenny's part. Gov, these uh, internal surveys that you use, um, you've been using them in uh, other elections? All, all four past presidential elections. And uh, track record has been four zero. We've done we everything has been the same. Every been uh, it's been usually been very accurate in what we have. Our sample size is um, eight hundred, so it's plus minus four point five. It's a hundred mm -hmm. per district, mm -hmm. and it, it is it's really very indicative of what's going to happen in the entire elections. Thank you, uh, Congrufus. Uh, welcome back. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear clearly. I heard uh, Governor Rimulia. Yes, I can hear you, John. Uh, thank you. So uh, uh, while you were away, we were talking about the internal surveys uh, uh, that the uh, governor has been privy to in Cavite, uh, and they show uh, a consistent uh, plus 60% uh, rating for uh, Bongbong Marcos. Uh, and the track record of that particular internal survey or pollster uh, is uh, is good considering uh, the last uh, four um, elections. We'll, we'll get back to that. We'll, we'll talk about uh, some of the numbers and so on. Um, Kong, let me get back to you. You're joining us from Cagayan de Oro. I cannot recall a time when there were four presidential candidates all campaigning in Mindanao. But this week, we've seen uh, Juan Juan Marcos, uh, Vice President Rebredo, is Comoren. Uh, and uh, Manny Pacquiao. Uh, does this mean that Mindanao's 15 million votes are still up for grabs? I, I believe so. Some candidates are leading, but as I have said earlier, at 40 days before the election, we can see in Mindanao the shifting of uh, support. We have seen how Reforma President Pantaleon Alvarez has shifted his support in the Davao region from uh, from uh, Ping Lakson to Lenny Robredo. Uh, also in uh, Sambuanga City, we have uh, Bing Mayor Bing Klimako uh, also working for Lenny Robredo and Sara Duterte. And of course, in uh, in uh, Agusan del Norte, Congressman Lawrence Fortune has uh, announced his support for. Uh, Lenny Robredo. And uh, I, about uh, three weeks ago, our party, the Centrist Democratic Party, have decided to endorse Lenny Robredo and uh, Mayor Sara Duterte as vice president. And recently, the other day, and uh, she will be meeting with uh, Lenny just like what I did this afternoon. Uh, we have uh, Congresswoman uh, Juliet Uy of the second district of Misamis Oriental, uh, who is running for governor with his entire uni team declaring for Lenny Robredo. And also, John, uh, yesterday, it will be confirmed today, um, our congressman, three-term congressman, Malu Acosta Alba of the first district of Bokidnon is going to, is going to support Lenny Robredo. So in Mindanao, there is a big shift of support from previous candidates now going all to Lenny Robredo Jan. Uh, Kong Rufus, uh, quick follow up. Uh, how do you think uh, Mick Zubiri, who is, of course, a senator from Bukidnon, uh, will, will vote here? Uh, he's part of uh, both uh, Vice President Robredo's Senate slate and also of. Uh, uh, ex-senator uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. I cannot really predict how uh, Senator Mick Soberi, but he's going to top uh, the senatorial elections in Mindanao, I am sure. He will top Kage and the Oro, Bukidnon, Misamis Oriental. Because Senator Mick Soberi have done so much for us. He has given so much projects like in Kage and the Oro, our flood control. They came mostly from uh, 
Nick Subiri. So I cannot predict how he will go, but uh, certainly a uh, congressman in uh, congressman in Bukidnon, and we can now count uh, Malu Acosta Alba, another mm -hmm. two will be joining, and they should be the ones announcing it. So in other words, in the recent past, in the last uh, two to three weeks, there has been a shift from other presidential candidates going to Lenny Robredo, and that is a fact, uh, John. Thank you. Uh, Gov, uh, you've been listening to um, Kong Rufus. Um, um, looking at your internal surveys and then listening to what's happening, I think th there is no question that there is a, some a switching of support. Uh, I think all points of Mindanao are covered and so on. Uh, Gov, I want to ask you, from your perspective, uh, do you think it's a little too late for this? Uh, or do 40 days is still enough time? Sorry, Gov, you're on mute. Uh, okay. Uh, but okay, um, when you look at the fine lines of the the survey matter, you will see there the question of possibility of changing minds. Mm -hmm. And in this case, what we have seen, uh, both in Cavite and the national numbers, are that these the floor of the support for BBM, the the, the lowest you can possibly go is fifty eight, and the highest is seventy. So. There, given that, given those numbers, I think it's a bit late now to, um, it can shift a little, but not as dramatically as people think it will, as some people think it will. Uh, Kong Rufus, uh, how do you respond to that? I think and I uh, believe otherwise uh, that 40 days, there were some elections before that there were candidates for president like Duterte who were quite low in the initial months, but then made up on the last 40 days. In other words, it's crucial because people are still, while well, they are, or some of them are already committed to vote for a candidate, they also look at who, at what are the developments among volunteers and the political leaders. Uh, clearly now, the edge for political leaders uh, is going to Lenny Robredo, and I can say that uh, for Mindanao. And I was also saw Visayas, where Governor Ebardone of Eastern uh, Samar and Governor Edwin Ong of Northern Samar have announced that they are going for Lenny Robredo. So uh, if this trend continues, I believe that uh, Lenny Robredo will be able to catch up and many will be convinced to uh, shift also uh, from, uh, uh, from other candidates to uh, Lenny Robredo. Because after all, this is a choice uh, for the better tomorrow of our country. And I believe that sincerely that uh, the best choice for the presidency uh, to lead our country is Lenny Robredo. And many others are going to have the same, uh, the same uh, sentiment. And that is why there is an increase. As we go along, I am in touch with some other congressmen. And they are also about to uh, announce their, their uh, support for Lenny Robredo. I am talking about uh, Mindanao congressmen joining us who are already with Lenny Robredo and coming out in the very near future, John. Kong uh, Rufus, can I ask you to respond also to the argument of Paul, uh, Governor John Vick? He says that yes. uh, from what he sees, the rise in the numbers uh, for VP Lenny actually come from the non-BBM presidential candidates. So uh, that hasn't affected uh, Marcos's majority rating. So uh, there might be well, movement, uh, for instance, uh, getting the votes from Manny Pacquiao or from Isco Moreno or from Ping Lacson, but uh, it won't. That movement won't uh, uh, disturb uh, the ratings of Marcos. Uh, what do you well, say to that? Well, John, that remains to be seen as we go to the coming days and weeks because uh, there will certainly be not only shifts of support from uh, the other candidates, but I believe like in, in our city, there is now some shift uh, from, uh, from BBM to Lenny. And so uh, I believe that as we go along uh, with political leaders and volunteers leading the charge, 
uh, we will be able to convince many uh, of those who have other candidates, including uh, those for Bongbong Marcos, to already shift to Lenny's uh, to support Lenny Robredo Jan. Thank you. Gog, um, despite uh, all the voters uh, in Cavite, uh, it turns out that in 2016, uh, Cavite had one of the lower uh, voter turnout rates in Calabarzon. I think only about 75%. Only Rizal was lower at, I think, 71%. Batangas was 82 Quezon, 83%. Um, do you think uh, Cavite will still have a 75% voter turnout rate? Or are there efforts to raise that? Um... I think the fervor now is so great and the and the and the intensity of emotions are so high that the voter turnout will be higher than it's ever been. I think not only for Cavite but for the entire country. People feel, feel very strongly for their candidate. They are mm -hmm. it's getting very nasty every day in the in social media. So mm -hmm. I'm really happy that there is fervor and intensity, no matter whose side you're on. I'm, I'm very happy that there is fervor because decisions are made by those who show up. And the higher the fervor, the higher the turnout, the more the convincing the mandate for the next president will be. I th think we'll reach 80% rate this time. I think we're ready to mobilize everyone. And I think um, the BMO winning Cavite by a very large margin, perhaps the largest in the country. Uh, yes, well, he, right now, uh, if the surveys are any gauge, he is headed for that, uh, the first majority presidency. Uh, since, since 1966, uh, yeah, 66. Nine, yeah, uh, since December, 19, yeah. Uh, November 1965. Um, yes. Uh, what about in uh, Mindanao? Uh, do you expect uh, an 80% voter turnout uh, as in 2016? Or would you expect even higher? I mean, there was a uh, an increase in 2016 because Duterte of Dava was running. Uh, do you think uh, her daughter will have that same kind of effect? Well, I believe generally that, as uh, Governor Remulia has said, uh, this is a very crucial election. In Cagayan de Oro, there are friends of mine who have not... Uh, is a professional, so have not been voting, but have now really have, have already registered and they're going to vote. And they're going to vote for Lenny Robredo. And so therefore, I believe that it will be higher than 80%. Uh, there is much support uh, of, uh, of uh, our people in selecting uh, the best president. And I believe that as we go along, it will be clear that the best president for our country is Lenny Robredo and many volunteers and young people of Mindanao, including professionals, and even those from the masses, after seeing that uh, this is a choice uh, of who should become our president for a better future of our country, uh, ultimately, they will decide to vote for Lenny Robredo. Thank you. Can I ask you both, uh, Gov and uh, Com, uh, Governor John Vick first, um, how do you explain the uh, uh, large rallies for Vice President Robredo. So even in Cavite, for instance, uh, Bob John B. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I'm caught in a pickle here because uh, I might be in danger of being misquoted. But the way I see it, the strident minority are very organized for Lenny Robredo. And the way I see it, um, whenever they have a rally, it's not a localized rally, but rather a regional rally where like when they were in Cavite uh, we know it for a fact that people from Metro Manila a large contingent from Laguna a large contingent from Batangas showed up and participated in the rally but I, I, I as you see the large rallies have been going on for the last uh, three weeks uh, three mm -hmm. weeks and the numbers haven't changed they're still the same the movement for BBM's numbers have not changed so I don't think rallies are indicative of where how the people feel it's only the it is indicative of how capable the local organizers are in letting their people show up mm -hmm. uh in the end you have a fraction of the people less than one percent attending a rally but 99 percent um basing their judgments on how they feel for the candidate and in this case 
uh, we had the largest rally in Cavite ever, but it's also indicative that uh, in the survey show that BBM will win by a large margin. Won't that uh, mean that uh, perhaps Calabarzon will vote differently? I mean, if, if there are, uh, if it's a regionalized rally, so you have people from Laguna, you have people from uh, other provinces, uh, would that be indicative of a regional uh, trend? Well, I've seen the numbers regionally. Um, he is strongest in Cavite and in Rizal. And there is a, he has a double digit advantage also in Quezon and Batangas and Laguna. But uh, I think he, in the uh, 16 million voters of Calabarzon, BBM will win sizably a, a, a very large majority. Thank you. Uh, if I'm mistaken, I think it, we're talking about 9 million registered voters. Ah, uh, 16 million people, or as I said, 9 yeah, million registered yeah, voters. Yeah, 9 million registered voters for Region 4A. Mm -hmm. uh, Kong mm -hmm. Rufus, um, how do you uh, interpret the large rallies in Mindanao? Uh, there have been some large ones also from Isco Moreno, uh, for instance. Yeah, but the, the largest rallies are for Lenny Robredo. And rallies are always indications of how the, pe the people are going to, to vote for. Uh, large rallies of Lenny Robredo in Zamboanga, in Cagen de Oro, Butuan City, in Caraga, in Davao. And so we, we see that uh, with this... Uh, uh, show of support of volunteers going to the rally. In the case of uh, Mindanao, they are not inter-regional rallies or uh, from other regions would come. They are really on the same place where the rallies are made, like in Cagayan de Oro. These were mostly Cagayan de Oro, Misamis Oriental. No other mixture from other regions. So uh, uh, as, as it would indicate in Mindanao, uh, the large rallies of for uh, Lenny Robredo would show that people would like to show uh, their presence and their enthusiasm and their, uh, and their very, very uh, emotional uh, support because they believe in Lenny Robredo to be their president. Uh, we therefore would see that uh, rallies uh, in the coming uh, polls later on, as the rallies would show uh, when the proper... Uh, when there will be a new uh, the service that will come out, I believe that there will be a big increase for Lenny Robredo and a decrease for the leading candidate. And so uh, we uh, all, we for Lenny in Mindanao, had been be, have always been campaigning. And uh, on my, in my case, I have been calling uh, our Mindanao representatives, and uh, well, some of them have already already came out in the open, others uh, will come in the coming days and weeks because in their hearts, as they have told me, uh, they are for Lenny Robredo. And uh, when they say that, when I mean, we talk about congressmen, uh, they have a sizable uh, following in, all, in, the, in their own respective districts and they can be able to ask their supporters to be able to uh, campaign and vote for uh, Lenny Robredo. Um, Kong Rufus and uh, Gov uh, John Vick, what is the value of an uh, endorsement from President uh, Duterte? There's the possibility that he will use the rally tomorrow in Cebu, his first campaign rally of this season, uh, to announce uh, his preferred presidential candidate. Um, is it possible to quantify, uh, for instance, uh, in terms of the number of votes? that President Duterte's endorsement uh, uh, will mean? Gov? We've seen that uh, current presidents have very little endorsing power in choosing the next president. You've seen that from, um, from Ramos to the Venetia, from uh, Gloria to Gibo, from uh, from uh, Aquino uh, from Aquino to Rojas, mm -hmm. it seems that the current president has very little influence in who the next president will be, 
Uh, ultimately, I think it is the candidate that matters. And ultimately, I think it's the way he connects with the people that matters. Kong Rufus, would you agree? Uh, I believe there will be some effect of the endorsement of the president. He's a very popular president. But I, I would believe that uh, uh, the endorsement, although it will add to the strength of a candidate, will not be the deciding factor. In other words, uh, what will decide these elections will be how the voter individually would want, uh, would want his or her candidate to win. It's a matter of commitment and a matter of hope. Uh, our, uh, our voters will vote for those that they believe will be good for the country. That is always what uh, I believe that they will. Because in a presidential election, uh, unlike local elections, when many other issues are there, in the presidential election, it is really who will be the best president to govern this country in the six years uh, that will come. And that is why I believe that uh, uh, while there is some effect by, of the, a very, very popular president, uh, the, the, the victory of a candidate will depend on the voters, uh, uh, the voters' uh, choice on the best president for our country. Thank you. Uh, Gov, what if the president endorses uh, Isco Moreno? How do you think that will change? Uh... Well, it, of course, uh, there is a very strong following that the president has in the Bau and in Mindanao and the Visayas region. It will affect maybe, it will move maybe 4 or 5% towards the candidate of his choice. Um, but I think it matters more if he endorses a the next one in line. If he endorses Lenny, it will change the game. If he endorses BBM, it's game over. Um, it, but again, I, I think more than any endorsement, I think it's a candidate that matters the most. Let me let me just backtrack, uh, Gov. Uh, you're saying if President Duterte endorses Lenny Robredo, it will change the game. It will make it more competitive. Is that what you mean? Uh, you yes, I think uh, she. I think uh, the numbers that I've seen the uh, presidential endorsement from Lenny, she will go from 19 to a possible 26. That's the ceiling that we see. Um, but the the bottom for BBM is, I think, 58. But I think he's heading towards maybe a 62, 63 percent uh, majority. Well, uh, I have a few more questions before we before I let you go, uh, gentlemen. Um, what are the milestones that we can look forward to in the next uh, well next 40 days? Well, uh, well, the milestones would really be uh, how uh, the candidates are able to uh, be able to present their uh, programs and platforms and what is their individual track records. In other words, I am banking on the track record of public service of Lenny Robredo, and so are many other leaders and voters. And so uh, as we go along, it is really more on uh, the uh, how our voters would think uh, for the future of our country. And that is why I believe that as we go along, it's a matter of uh, the big leaders uh, coming for candidates and uh, supporting candidates, which we see in the Lenny Robredo camp, more volunteers coming out for Lenny Robredo, more members of the laity of the church coming for going for Lenny Robredo. And so there is, to me, a momentum. The momentum is, I think, uh, even John Dick will agree, that the momentum is now for Lenny Robredo. But uh, my good friend, Governor Emilia, saying is that uh, the momentum may not be enough to cover uh, the, uh, the the lead of the uh, of the uh, of BBM's campaign, but I am um, I believe that 40 days is still a lot of time to go, and if there are more volunteers going for Lenny, more of our laity going out for uh, to campaign, and political big political leaders of our country giving already their endorsement, then that will be milestone and that will change uh, the game. Um, I have a different view. 
I had thought that the milestone was Feb 25 uh, during the Ed's of a People Power Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, that is the high point of the negative campaign against BBM. He seems to have passed that and maintained his lead. I thought not attending debates would have affected his standing. He seems to have passed that and not affected his votes. And my contrarian view to my good friend, uh, Congressman Rodriguez, is that presidential elections are very emotional. More than being a cerebral vote, it's how people really feel about the candidate. It is how it affects their heart, how it affects their emotions, who they feel is the best candidate. They don't necessarily look at uh, the biodatas or the achievements, although I can back up. I think that the I, BBM has shown that as congressman, as governor, and a senator, his track record is not is nothing to be ashamed of. He's done very well. He has no record of corruption. But I think in this case, he connects better with the voters than any other presidential candidate I've seen. And that is reflective on the first time that he will have a majority president rather than a plurality president. Uh, Go, I'm just curious. Did you ever consider supporting uh, Ping Lakson? Uh, we had a long discussion beforehand. I, I asked uh, his, I, I, I did ask, I informed him that I would be supporting BBM. Um, he took it. Uh, he took it well. Um, he knows that the history of the Marcoses and the Remulias go way, way back since 1979, and we've always been beside each other. Uh, he understood perfectly well. There were no hard feelings. In fact, when he was, when he was, um, when uh, when Vice President Lord Robredo cast aspersions against him during the Boyabunda debate, Abja Boyabunda interview, I was the first one to defend being Laksan's record as a. Uh, his record as a public servant. So there are no hard feelings. Uh, we we remain good friends, and we talk often. And we the last time we talked was maybe three weeks ago, and we we're, we're okay. Uh, Kong Rufus, how about you? Did you ever consider uh, supporting Manny Pacquiao as a favorite son of Mindanao? Ah, uh, he is a friend of mine, but uh, my choice really comes from my heart and my mind. My heart loves the Filipino people. I love my country. And that was why my heart tells me I should be for, for Lenny Robredo, for our children. My mind tells me the best choice after a careful evaluation of all, all of them are my friends. I don't say anything bad about them. But what I would like to say is that Lenny Robredo, in the past six years, I saw him, I saw her work. I saw her in, uh, I saw her First, as a congresswoman in Congress, in the 16th Congress, before she became vice president. She comes to the session on time. She's always present. She comes for the hearings, well prepared, and participates because she's a, she's a lawyer. She's an economist. So therefore, she's very much qualified to be president. They're talking about pro proven track record. You see her during the six years of her presidency. She was a working vice president. And you can see that his his cornerstone project and his uh, his important uh, 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 program was the Ahon Lailayan Coalition to go to the countryside, to go to the farthest places of our country, to go to the indigenous peoples, the farmers, where government is needed most. And in spite of the bigger budget given by the executive, I saw and I always moved in the uh, in the budget hearings to increase her budget because i saw her working hard she comes from she goes to mindanao she goes to caraga she goes to many places in the philippines and then the pandemic came who was the first high government official when covid 19 hit our country who was the who was the high government official who was one of the first to be able to give ppes to be able to give librim sakai from the donations from the donated vehicles used by by uh, uh, well-meaning people who gave dormitory spaces, who came to Cagayan de Oro to bring a vaccine express where our motorcycle, where our motor cab drivers were infected with vaccines to protect them from COVID-19. And when Odette came, John, when Odette came in our country and uh, ravaged Mindanao, especially Caraga, and then hit uh, Leyte, and then Cebu, and behold, who was the first public official to bring water, to bring relief to typhoid or death victims? Lenny Robredo. 
In other words, she is the most qualified and the most prepared to become to become president. Why? Because she had worked hard for the six years of her vice presidency, John. So that is what I can say about my candidate. And I believe that in the coming weeks, we will have more of our leaders and our volunteers go for Lenny Robredo to be able to have our country move forward and to have a better Philippines. And of course, everyone, we see the choice. We, I, John, would want to be on the right side of history because history demands that we should be with Lenny Robredo, John. Thank you. Can I just ask one last question? Uh, I'd like to ask about Sara Duterte. Uh, Go and Kong Rufus. Um, what what impact? Uh, what in, uh, role does uh, Sara Duterte's candidacy for the vice presidency uh, play uh, in Kong uh, Marcos's uh, own uh, campaign and in uh, Lenny Robredo's uh, candidacy? Well, in the case of uh, Bongbong Marcos, I think sealing the deal to be for her to be vice president uh, made it a game over situation for everyone. I think um, her base support of 28, I think, her base support of 28, all shifted towards BBM, most majority of which shifted towards BBM, and it is maintained with BBM. So if you can see a cross-section of their voters... A lot of the former um, Sara voters for president shifted towards BBM when they uh, made the alignment. So I think uh, that was the most crucial step in the candidacy of uh, BBM. And I think that uh, uh, I don't want to cast, uh, I don't want to put uh, my friend Rufus in a negative light, but I think uh, Mindanao will deliver its votes for BBM. Thank you. Rufus? Well, uh, we have a very good tandem to propose to the to our people of the country and especially Mindanao. It is the tandem of Lenny Robredo and uh, Mayor Inday Sara Duterte. Both of them are lawyers. They are qualified for the job. Lenny Robredo, three years congresswoman, six years vice president. In the, ter in, in the case of uh, uh, Inday Sara, has been mayor for three, two consecutive terms. Uh, Inday Sara is a lawyer. She had worked well uh, and, and really led uh, Davao City, one of the biggest cities in our country. She, had, she has the, uh, she has the uh, experience and the track record. Putting them together would show that now Mindanao will go for two provincianas. One provinciana from Bicol, because after all, Bicol also needs development. And we have Mindanao with Sara Duterte, who, is, uh, who, who comes from a land of promise, John. And that is why this is the confluence of two uh, good leaders. And with Sara Duterte, with Lenny Robredo, that is why Rosa Robredo, Sara in Mindanao is gaining ground. And I tell you, uh, the new congressmen and congresswomen who have joined uh, for, for Lenny and Sara are now coming out and they are for Mindanao. And Mindanao will be going for Lenny Robredo and Sara Duterte. Thank you very much, gentlemen, uh, for your time and your insights, uh, for sharing your analysis of the presidential race and also the impact of the vice presidential candidacy of Sara Duterte. Um, thank you, um, Cavite Governor John Vic Rimulia and Deputy Speaker Rufus Rodriguez. Thank you thank and good night. Thank you, Governor Rimulia. Always mm -hmm. good to see you. Nice seeing you, and Congressman. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. That's it for us tonight. Join us again on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Follow us closely on the campaign trail because it isn't just elections as usual. This is John Neri. Good night.